This tutorial covers the quadratic formula, which is the third method for finding your x-intercepts. We have the quadratic formula in a box, and it can only be used when you have your equation in standard form. So anytime you see an a in your formula, you want to replace it with the first number, which is a number in front of the x squared. When you have your b's in your formula, you actually want to just replace it with the number in front of the x. And then your c is the constant that has no x beside it. So taking a look at 1a, we notice that it's already in standard form, which is great. Plus, they've already changed your y to a 0, which is what you'd have to do anyway in order to find your x-intercept. So your y value should be 0. We're essentially just solving for x now, and we're going to use a formula to do that. My a value is going to be an invisible 1. The b value is going to be positive 7 and the c value is going to be positive 12. If we have the formula x equals 2, we're just going to start putting everything in now. Negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4 times your a times your c and those are 1 and 12 all over 2 times your a. Equals negative 7 plus or minus. Now that plus or minus is what gives you your two x-intercepts. So one from the plus answer and one from the negative or the minus answer. So 7 squared is 49, minus 4 times 1 times 12 is 48, all over 2, which is negative 7 plus or minus 1. Okay, and we can actually square root the 1, which is just 1. And then our two answers will be the negative 7 plus 1 over 2, or the negative 7 minus 1 over 2 and that gives way to your two x-intercepts which are negative 7 plus 1 which is negative 6 split in half is negative 3 or negative 7 minus 1 which is negative 8 split in half is negative 4. If you've noticed this 1a question is the exact same as the previous video on factoring so we're just showing that we did get the exact same answers as the previous video as well just using a different method. Let's move on to the second one. Here's your A value, your B value, and your C value. Okay, so X equals to negative B, and that's negative 20, not negative 20X. Plus or minus negative 20 in brackets squared. I like to put the brackets beside um, the negative 20 because if you didn't have the brackets it would actually be a negative 400 instead of a positive 400 and you might get the wrong answer. 4 times your a times your c all over 2 times a equals negative negative makes a positive 20 positive 400 minus 4 times 2 times 50 gives you another 400 all over 4. 20 plus or minus and those 400s are going to cancel out and give me a 0. Now a square root of 0 is just 0. So if I take the 20 minus the 0 or the 20 plus the 0 I'm going to get the exact same answer which is 5. So in this case, my x-intercepts are 5. And the very last one. All right, so let's do your a value, b value, and c value. Negative b plus or minus negative b squared sorry, regular b squared, minus your 4 times your a times your c 
And if you've written a little bit too far, you need to extend your square root sign. 2 times your a equals a positive 2 plus or minus root 4 minus 4 times 1 times 3 gives you 12 over 2, which equals 2, 2 plus or minus root negative 8 over 2. Now that right there is a problem. And that's a problem because you can't take the square root of a negative number. That's a complex number. So this is as far as we can go in terms of what x equals to. Therefore, x equals to this complex number. I want you to notice in a, b, and c that we get different answers each time. a gave us two different numbers, b gave us one number, and then c gave us not even really real numbers. It gave us complex numbers. So in the next tutorial, we'll address why that is. Going on, I just want to talk about a word problem really quickly, and I've actually provided the solution already. So the following equation rep, or sorry, expresses the approximate height h meters of a basketball thrown upwards from the top of an 80 meter bleacher at 20 meters per second as a function of time t seconds since the ball is thrown. They gave us this equation and now they're asking will the ball ever reach 110 meters? What I've noticed is that well the 110 meters is talking about the height. So I'm essentially taking this 110 and putting it into my h value. Then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to see if there is ever a time, so I'm going to solve for t, when the height is actually 110. So once I put the 110 into the h, I'm going to bring it over to the other side so that I get my 0. And that 110 is going to affect the 80, and it's going to change it to a negative 30. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go through all of the quadratic formula again. And we notice, oh, okay, so we have a square root of a negative 200, which is a big problem. Since that means that in this case, t isn't a normal number, then the ball must never reach 110 meters.